You Did you guys ever follow a warden? One at a time, please. Where did I get the spear? I got a spear from doing... That would be more of an innovation of the Vortex, no? His hat chart thingy reminded me of it. And like the way it's resetting, it's actually folding back onto itself. Fuck. Kinda like this. That's not a gift, what the fuck? Oh, um, I think I think somebody made the <clears throat> reference yesterday that what you just posted right now, Zabby, it kind of reminds me of like an atomic bomb going off with the mushroom clouds. Which is Mandelbrot, I believe. Right, right. And then the second gift there gives you an example of like folding onto itself. That's like origami. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, your last your last gift is like origami. Hey, Astro, are you there? What's up? Uh, maybe this is where you're going with it already, but that uh, that pivot point where you were getting the different screenshots of it uh, overhead and then mm -hmm. uh, different perspectives. So it almost looks like it made a 90-degree turn and they're sending it that's P Deeper over Q. into the Z axis. So it's actually going to another, if we want to think of it as a dimension or another Mandelbrot. Um, they're all they exist on all planes. So if you can imagine, So we, if we draw other Fibonacci circles, oh, let me go to the daily. Maybe that's why I'm all fucked up. So I think today this price action is playing into what I was kind of getting at yesterday with uh. Does the markets shape the stories in the news, or do the stories shape the markets? And I think this whole Evergrande thing proves that it's the stories, or it's the markets that shape the stories. They needed a catalyst to blame for the red days yesterday, and then all of a sudden, they're going to pay it off, apparently, at least the interest, on Thursday. Well, that's just the domestic bonds of Evergrande. They haven't mentioned anything about paying the foreign bonds. Yeah, but the domestic bonds were what was due on Thursday, right? Or was it both? I think domestic bonds were due when did they let me go back to the article. Hold on. I think US is next week. Thursday, Thursday. Yeah, I know one of them would do Thursday, but it was just the Why interest is this on so fucking the dollar bonds or something like that. Okay, there we go. Because this is all true, then, then this is all this price action is going to happen regardless of anything. Because it's already set in stone to happen. So then they just make the narrative whatever it needs to be. So both of them are due on Thursday, <clears throat> only paying the coupon payment for the domestic bonds on Thursday. 
so what amount do you can I don't know what what the amounts they would owe then or default on? It's a little payment due for the twenty ninth as well. They have an eighty four and a half million dollar bond due Thursday on in terms of U.S. dollars. Is he whoever just talked is he really allowed to anybody else or is it just me? Which one? I'm no, sorry. Oh, me? me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull your mic just a little bit away from your mouth. How's this? There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Better? Okay, my bad. Yeah. No, you're good, brother. So, if we look at this chart and we imagine the original one, which is drawn from 2013 to the base of January, is one dimension. There's curvature to it. Now, this other one, and I'll just make it. Uh, white is drawn from the base of uh, 2013 to today. And if we look here at this um, introduction to dynamical systems and geometric mechanics, which is page 50, this is the Lorenz system. These equations are used to map out the trajectory of essentially the bulbs or the Julia sets within a Mandel, uh, Mandelbrot set. Um, this is I, what I want you to imagine when you're looking at uh, this chart because I'm trying oh my. to recreate. Oh. Do you see? No, look at my, look now, at my stream. I, I think what you're talking about, right? Holy shit. What's that? You're cracking the matrix, what, what am I looking please. at? I took, I took what you sent me, and made it 3D. That's it. Now the only <laughs> thing is, uh, there, it's not enclosed. No, um, the the parameters. The meat flaps are, are right here. The meat flaps. Yeah, here's your ceiling titty <laughs> pattern. <laughs> are you Good calling boy. it the meat flaps? <laughs> <laughs> So let me send you this, Astro, and maybe you can recreate. Are you? Can you look at my screen real quick? Yeah, I got it pulled up on my other monitor. Okay, awesome. Um, this is what I'm trying to emulate by adding the second um, fib circle. And again, I have a third one drawn here. But if we zoom in, imagine this being two levels, right? So we have the inception of AMC, if you will being attracted in this direction. Uh -huh. So there's an attraction point here. It you changes look. directions, as uh, that gentleman said, 90 degrees almost. There's an attraction point. It starts mapping around because the equation or the Mandelbrot set uh, says that it eventually maps around the entire dynamic, uh, the parameter of the dynamic plane. Okay. You have... Do you have a function for the curvature line? A function for the curvature line? I guess line? if you were to take the, the center points of each of those dimensions and give me the x, y, and z values, I think I could plug that in. Like to measure for time that it takes to right. take it around the entire thing? Right. So it would be 120 days. Um, the uh the circumference divided by 120 days if we're going if we're assuming it takes 120 days so it would be 21.45 uh, p over q or basically just the price that. action seen in each run that's a neat site that's true so it's it's uh yeah I'll link or it. is it tw is it 21.45 21.45 times 120 Wait, isn't 21.45? Those are all, uh, uh, what do you call them, numbers? Uh, the, not the, not the Fibonacci set, but the... The golden ratio? No. Uh, maybe. I forget what the terminology, it was something, it sounded Italian. Um, how I, so, the Mandelbrot set says it will eventually map out around the entire parameter that that dynamic plane minus at most one time. So 21.45, like I said, 
is calculated by taking the circumference and just dividing it by P over Q, which would be equal to 120 days, give or take, depending on how you're measuring it. So um, that comes out to roughly 21.45 additions to this 120 day cycle around the parameter. And that's not assuming, that's assuming that it maintains its uh, structure of op operation. I'm not saying that this will happen 21.45 times, like we aren't gonna have 21 runups. Um, it just goes to show that the, within the Riemann sphere, which we identify as the seventh ring, and in the literature, it being the neighborhood of all price points on the main cardioid tending towards infinity. I just want to be clear, the price will not go to infinity. These 500,000 per share people are out of their minds, in my opinion. Um, it's going to end eventually. So tending to infinity and going to infinity. The velocity of it percent. would approach infinity, but the mechanics of how our world works it would prevent it from happening exactly so this is all a theoretical world that we're looking at um theoretically it would go on for infinity um but again the literature says tending to infinity that just means moving towards infinity which would explain like if if we visualize different dimensions so there's an attraction point here if this were if the orbit going? of this parameter was zero or it was orbiting zero, we would consider the center of each fib circle point zero. So that is the attraction point on the grand scheme of things. So the attraction point after uh, May 17th becomes this fib circle, if you can imagine that. Now, where does the price go from there? It's orbiting, right? To the moon! It's mapping here. Now, what's the attraction point from here? We're about to rip. This, this Yo. circle is drawn on a different dimension from January to, or if you can visualize it at least, from January to today. And then you can get crazier with the projected bar pattern using that as a fib circle uh, plotting point because it was solved for using the fairy tree equation. So we can consider it to be consistent with all of this as, as far as um, right. mathematically goes. So then you get into this situation where you start to see the entire loop. It's, it's like an infinite loop tending toward infinity. Um, the question is, it, it, it doesn't so much matter that the price is going right because obviously price action is only going right into the future. Um, what matters is that it continues to go up because at any point, like uh, the Mandelbrot, if this were to become a bulb that moved, let's say, let's say the central point of um, attraction, if the price dropped to down to this right so something like that what would be the next point of attraction probably downward price action and that's assuming that like this is a fucking factor in all of this again it's theoretical but i imagine there's something an equation in an algorithm that's up the input or it's operating as a function um uh, so it's all up for interpretation like if someone wants to say this is all bullshit whatever but from what i see this could be it and hopefully the dude from bu gets back to me uh if not i'm gonna get a presentation together with everyone's input and information and i'll just go there I've been wanting to come up with a new name for the theory just because there's already like a 
It's already branches of not fractal theory nor cycle theory, but it needs its own term. Um, so if you guys have ideas, let me know. Edgy mm. fuck theory? <laughs> um. <laughs> We're all in a vacuum. <laughs> the vacuum theory. Hey, Welsh, can you show me where those dates were? Yeah. On your... The middle theory. <laughs> so... 218, 328. Yeah, on your theory, where do we go? 218. I'm going to go. <clears throat> but so I can see it in the. Yeah, so I can see it with the basins and all the other stuff. Yep, yep. Okay. C and D. Do you know what the basins look like? Um, I'll delete these fib circles because I guess they're not entirely important. All right. So, go ahead. I got an idea. Can you watch the stream real quick, Welch? And everybody else. One sec. I gotta do this for him. But go ahead. I'll. What if? What if? What if? What if it's? Uh, what if it's not the price that's that's orbiting the theoretical singularity? It's us orbiting around what's already a singularity. Look at, look at the stream when you get the chance. Take a quick peek. Go ahead. So this is this is the center point. This is your your vertical plane or your horizontal plane. This was the the line that you made. Look, watch yeah. the price as we. I gotta get the lighting right. The more, uh, the more compressed the price action looks, the further away from orbit that we are. The more compressed the price action looks, the more away from orbit we are? The further away we are throughout our orbit as we're viewing price action. The more compressed the price action is, the farther away from orbit we are? Yeah, so orbit see... Being what? We're, we're orbiting around theoretically in time. So that's look at, exactly, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at the price line, right? Like it, right, right here, it compresses. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's as, as we're approaching this theoretical singularity. To us, Percentage. the price action becomes more rapid. But what really so is that, happening is just. That, that's exactly what it is. And if, uh, I think, was it JT Thunder? Maybe it was someone else. They made a Fibonacci chart that uh, was hooked up to the price chart. And as we approached, which turned out to be um, points of acceleration, which would be, so one of them was on his chart in this region. So we had an X on his chart uh, right above this center point of the Fibonacci. Um, as we approached that point, we increased our rotation. So there, it's just like a black hole or um, space and time with, right. I don't know how to describe it. It, it has relativity but, involved. But you're right. Here yeah, we yeah. fucking go. Exactly. Um, so September or February 18th, I'll start in September, August 11th to September 21st, August 11th to September 21st, and then February 18th. Now, are those both verification zones? Is that how I say it? Uh, so this bifurcation. Is a theoretical bur bur right, right, whatever. right. Uh, these two will be, and you'll see. So, Astro's algorithmic reciprocation theory art. February 18th. To, well, that point isn't, but, um, 
really only one date. So well, we're only... already out of the verification zone on the bottom. That would I, I could have him run a, a just set of dates to, March to match 20... that. Just so everybody has their. I don't. I don't. If you have something in your teeth, I'm going to tell you, right? Um, bifurcation, just so that we're all... Yeah, that's, that's why I was Fuck saying... Fuck you, Robert Devani. <laughs> you've been saying it wrong because he spells it verification in the fucking thing. Can you say it one more time, Astro? Bi, Sorry, don't... bi, like bicycle, vacation, yeah. vacation. That sounds correct. Bi lubrication? Bifurcation. Bifurcation. Oh, not bi lubrication. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, bifurcation. bifurcation. So yeah. those two. Bifurcation. You got it. It's like perforation. They're not in the bifurcation. It's prior uh, to. Well, September twenty first was yesterday. That's so look, he's comparing those dates to the left section. So, August eleventh to September twenty first is not. Um. A verification. It Boy. it would be if we if it would be if we ran, okay. um, but not yet. So to answer the question, the 18th no. of February to March 29th is not. But let's see what it is in correlation to everything. So now that we're onto that, I noticed earlier you had the third seven crucible or whatever the fuck we're calling it. I can't remember what corbial. Uh, Drawn up, and you had both the bifurcations in that one segment of time. Was there a reason they don't display uh, corresponding to what already happened? As far as like the damn, what am I trying to say? So, do you know what bifurcation is? Like, so. Yeah, yeah, the bifurcation is where the split point is, where it basically doubles down; it, it repeats itself into two. Would be right, right, here. Here. Yeah. right here, right here, right here. Yeah, yeah. So and the other so half what, would be GameStop. Whatever mm. uh, that means. <laughs> yes, theoretically, if it's a basket, <clears throat> it would connect to the other side of it. I'm sorry, I'm dead uh, ass. It's nine months ahead or three months behind. Three months ahead or nine months behind. So you're asking why the buy? Ask your question again. So earlier, you have the buy for the third. Crubial, or I can't remember what we're fucking called, Corbial, the group, the family. You had a third one up there. The one. Theoretically, in the future, the one part, yeah, out there. So then, yeah, yeah the one third part. Um, but you had the two run ups in there, but it was not proportional. Like it was so straight the only it was, it was basically what you had there, but it was just like less time. That, That's exactly what it is. So if we're talking about cycles. Uh, the reason it appeared like that was because I just used a bar pattern tool and uh, projected, so this would be about 240 days into 120 days. That's why there were two bifurcation points rather than just one. I mean, but I could have... So I, I guess could... that's my question is, what was the what was the idea behind that? Like, what led you to do that? Gravitational singularity looks uh, like this. Just uh, laziness. Uh, I just wanted to... Oh, just the visualization then. Okay, okay. I'll yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I could have taken one bar pattern, like one run from one bifurcation to here, and then just, ex I guess, calculated for one over three and then extended the bars to whatever that percentage was, which would be, it would bring it up to like 1480 in price, uh, 1400 rather. Yeah. So just uh, to easily do it, it just okay, so yeah, happened yeah, that was the correct percentage uh, move, uh, according to the Fairy Tree Edition. So, Welsh, how many days does it take to get from the end of the first dates he gave us to the bifurcation zone? Bifurcation. Yeah, did I say that right? Bifurcation? There you go. So how long does it take to get from... From the end eight. of first zone, yeah. Was it two eighteen or was it two eighteen to three eighteen? Yeah, uh three twenty eight. So... Three twenty eight. Yeah. So March twenty eighth. How long does it take? And then where is the start of the bifurcation zone past that? There you go. We'll do May twenty March twenty sixth. 
to the bifurcation zone? Two months or so. To the first one, to the next run up? Yeah. So that's March 26th or 28th to May 24th. Or if you want to be really fucked up, just do May 28th. Sure, do May 28th. So a month, roughly? Okay, one month. Oh, in two months, I'm sorry. Two months, all right. 59 days. Exactly. Right, we might be sitting on our hands. Because we don't know when this next bifurcation zone happens. We can try and get some sort of time, fr time frame or fractional pattern that's resembling itself, but we don't actually know the next bifurcation zone. No, we don't. There's not the a only... rule or law to this that we can apply. So this is all assuming that uh, P over Q equals 120 days or between 120 to 140 days. So right. there could, depending on where you measure the cycles from, like you could do it from the actual change in trend, like when we break this. So that would be a little bit sooner. Uh, you could do it from the change in trend, ultimately from the low in January. Uh, so it all depends on where you measure from. But who knows like yeah i just happens... wanted to see the dates to the bifurcation zone yep i think um, i had some examples of bifurcation between gamestop and amc on my stream would you guys agree uh Holy fucking shit. Uh, do me a favor. Take, uh... Oh, that, is... that is so fucked. One sec, one sec. Look at this here. GameStop and AMC. And also this. Uh... Take GameStop's movement, flip it horizontally, and line it up so that the the current of GameStop funnels into AMC hey, uh, from Astro. three months ago. Okay. I think a couple of people want some explanation on your stream that stepped in late, and since Welsh has been doing this since, like, I don't know, yesterday, right. you might want to catch some people up on it in your stream. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, specifically your Twitch audience, they're like, What the fuck's going on? <laughs> right, uh, uh, yeah, give me, give me, give me some. Hold on, I think we need to like digest the information first. So, you wanted me to put the back of G GME into what? Sorry, I'm gonna go meditate on the John, I'll be right back. So the June run up. He wanted you to flip it horizontally and then have it start on the other end. So that it would then meet up with AMC three months ago. Which one do I flip? Jimmy. Okay. So wait, so that's a June run up right there. He wants me to put present into now and wait what he said flip gme horizontally and have it merge into amc so instead of like by, vert yeah but by a difference of three months because one feeds into the other okay so that right there in the middle is three months ago that that would be the dune on up right i mean yeah that's more than three months now i guess yeah. Time flies. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, that's still June. June 22nd. Which, okay.
Is this what he wanted? I'm not sure. I'll just wait for him to come back. What did you want me to plug? Why into what? Take where GME, GME is right now. Like, take the past nine months of GME, flip it horizontally. I found it. The, the connector. <laughs> oh my okay. fuck. Oh, wait. Hold on. Do that. Take that. Take that. Yep. Put it on top of itself. So that it, yep, yep, uh, but overlay it even more so that the center point where like the, the handle is. No, uh, oh my to the right. fucking god, hold on, yeah. no, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, more, 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 right there, stop, <laughs> and then push it over to the right. Line up the the red top and the green top of the center so that they 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 match vertically. Nope. Oh wait, no, that's never mind. That's AMC's chart. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. So it forms like a field goal, field goal post, and then push it up just a little bit. Uh, wait. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Interesting. Wait, what does this mean though? Is it this? Kind of looks like the reverse of it is. W. Oh, no! Wait! Oh kind of my true. god! Oh my god! Wait! How fucking long have they been doing this? They started in twenty seventeen, right? Oh, I I I think it goes longer than that. Oh God! If you look at the early rise yep. of Bitcoin, big, the early rise of Bitcoin to their first twenty grand looks exactly like the AMC charts. Well, there's 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 a lot of common cool. patterns that show just because that's how how price charts behave, and that's how trading happens, but. This is this is beyond just like Elliot patterns. This is beyond Wyckoff patterns. So I just want to return real quick to a thought I was having earlier. Um, the not, somewhat ninety degree turn that it looks like. It looks like the price action was kind of bouncing along and then banged a left <laughs> and right it's bouncing away from us now as it climbs and it almost feels like that's a representation a visual representation of uh the you know synthetics and dark pool manipulation suppressing the price so it appears that these prices that we're seeing now um are current, but it's actually because they're further away from us. And so like just before the June run up, it looks like we were below the January run up. We were at like maybe 15 or something rather than January run up went, went to like 20 something. But if we were actually looking at the price action head on, 
uh, I feel like that candle would actually be above the 20. And the further, so the longer it goes on, just, the more of a difference there is between what we're seeing as the price so and um, right. what it would be without that manipulation. Okay, something is different. I don't know what the fuck it is. So I think we have this idea of manipulation of like sorry, feeding the baby. Um, I, I think we have this idea of manipulation as like somebody's there doing something to make the price go that way. And I I'm not seeing it that way. I, I see it more as like the manipulation is just the al algorithmic trading that they can do on milliseconds at a time. The byproduct of efficiency. And it's just that's how we get this consistent pattern. The only issue with that is that, le and again, we're assuming that everything's legal, but legally there has to be a human element within the trade, which is why I think that they, that there's shorts that are, that are manually being added in for whatever, whatever the time frame and all that stuff is to, in order to keep them at that human element being part of the trade, because you can't, legally, you can't just have a hundred percent algo trade. No, you can. You can. But and yeah, algo so, can trade so through an what, algo. That's what happened after after the whole like, on. when algorithms like the, the dot com bubble. What is the definition of human input, if you will? Then is it like the first time they set up the algorithm, a human has to do it, and then it just doesn't think? Because how do you have trading at milliseconds or? It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We, he he just he realized it. Let's no, push forward. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not trying to attack. I, I was literally asking. Like you, you have a point, but. Just what is the definition of being uh, involved in the trade? Uh, just, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like asking at what point. I have no idea. At what point does a standard gas-powered vehicle become uh, autonomous? I guess because technically there's a human at the steering wheel, but. Uh, the fuel injectors are electronic and being handled by the the PCBs within the vehicle. Uh, fucking uh, your spark plugs are all technically performing on an algorithmic basis. Um, yeah, so that kind of goes off this point. So if we go even the auto braking or what we have now with the Teslas that can drive themselves, there's still a human that takes over at any time. Well, at any time. I feel like we're more towards level three autonomy if you're looking at that analogy in the market where there's a lot of automatic shit going on and then there's just somebody there to kind of change the algorithm, if you will. Or Do you know, I, I don't I, would come in. I, I think that the way that this is the, the way this came to be and, and the philosophy I've held ever since I, I started to piece some of this together is that in January, when they turned off the buy button, it was because the system was about to break. By doing that, they created a stasis effect where the stocks that they turned the buy buttons off with created a PTSD-esque effect where it is constantly repeating the same thing over and over and over and over. Because if they were to, if they were to change it such that it wasn't repeating itself. You are exposing, you're creating exposure uh, to lack of predictability. And lack of predictability is what put them in this situation to begin with. So they are trying to avoid that altogether. That is why it constantly loops. It has to. Like I, I personally, I think that the biggest, the biggest not our unrealized factor here is, and I, I think the biggest, and I think you've said it before, that volume is mm -hmm. the number one thing. And I think that that's why after January and after June, 
you start seeing progressively more and more volume going to the dark pool. Uh, but, and I mentioned this last night, but I think that, but eventually it's going to screw them because like you said, Astro, that they have to keep the volume at a certain level because once the day's cover. cover gets too big, then, but so the, the more that, I mean, we've been, we spent like the last 60 days at over 60% dark pool volume. And I think that's how they're, that's how they're stretching time out is by keeping volume at a sustained level. But eventually you're going to get to a point that the volume is so big that you can't you can't keep you can't continue to keep pushing it to the dark pool but then you also can't continue you can't let it run through because your days to cover um your days to cover gets too short you know you can't push 90 percent of the volume to the dark pool for an extended period of time because then your days to cover becomes five and then you're completely lost right Honestly, the fact that they cross over each other like that, and like a wave pattern. Yeah. Well, I woke up and we're not below 38, so that makes me happy. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Uh, good, just focused. Hard to... Hard to like... I'm good, but the uh, the stress of trying to articulate all this shit is uh have, have you been caught up? What do you mean? A lot of shit been going down the past two days with all the DD going on in here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're all pretty. It's almost overwhelming. It is lot. overwhelming. It's a lot for sure. Yeah, no, my brain was hurting last night. Like seriously. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I swear to God, I went to bed after we talked about all this shit. I had dreams about price action last night. <laughs> <laughs> it was real tricky. You need to drink a little more before you go to bed. <laughs> no, I smoked. I smoked a bunch. <laughs> I always had vivid dreams like that. Lucky. Even if we take that away, even if you look at this. Oops. Like. Welcome to the church, motherfuckers! I wonder what caused the divergence in September. It's always been offset. It's always been offset. Jimmy is either. I'm oh, sorry. No, no, it's fine. Is Walsh still here or did he log off? Uh... He might have finally passed out at his keyboard. Poor guy. He's been. He's been fucking. Yeah, he's been. Yeah. yeah I found a a sixty page. Um research paper that goes into the relationship between interactions of human traders and algorithmic trading. And they're saying there's basically a lot of studies of, you know, human based trading and then separately robot based trading, but there hasn't been very many studies between like the two with, with them interacting with each other. Holy shit. Yeah. What the hell have we gotten ourselves into? I need to... I need to fucking... I need to get in contact with Houston Wade.
Welcome to the church, motherfuckers! Kania, go to Lord of the Seven Rings channel and explain. <laughs> How much you donate? Offset Incept 2020. Can you explain? Um, yeah, so... Brain? Let me see if I can depict it. Oh, give me See how these became nearly uh, synchronized, but they are slightly offset, right? Like when you're in traffic and you're sitting at a red light, turn left, and it takes fucking 13 eons for the light to go green. So you turn on your blinker. And then as you start to fucking daze into the abyss that is the rest of the fucking traffic around you. You notice the guy in front of you has his blinker on as well. And so you might be offset, but eventually that offset becomes synchronized. That's where this is relative to buying and selling pressure or whatever oscillation, o oscillation of... Uh, uh, trading pairs they have set up against these. So if it's off by, call it five minutes, for every minute you go by, um, or for every brain, do the thing. Wait. They're offset by some interval, and then depending on I would imagine the spy or the vix, depending on what phase of the movement they're in, if the vix goes crazy, then whatever has gone the highest relative to its cycle uh, would get covering. Which would then delay. Holy fuck.
Holy shit. Hold on, I might have found something. You donate. Equals MC Hedge are fact to the third powered squared. <laughs>
Welcome to the church, motherfuckers! You think it will drop when they talk today at 230? Um, No clue.
Jimbo. Let me restart this. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw some music on soon. Yeah, that would be here. Why is this not just? Oh, be right back.
Uh, yo, Skyro, welcome. I yeah, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yo, Zaz, thank you, man. Thank you, brother. Oh, it's all just a fucking... Oh, it's all for fun. Give me a second. Hey. Oh. All right, jumping back into the Discord. Oh, pal speaking. As the reopening continues, bottlenecks, hiring difficulties, and other constraints could again prove to be greater and longer lasting than anticipated, posing upside risks to inflation. Our framework for monetary policy emphasizes... Why can they never get their fucking mics right? ...expectations, both to foster price stability and to enhance our ability to promote our broad-based and inclusive maximum employment goal. Indicators of longer-term inflation expectations appear broadly consistent with our longer-run inflation goal of 2%. If sustained higher inflation were to become a serious concern, we would certainly respond and use our tools to assure that inflation runs at levels that are consistent with our goal. Continues to depend on the course of the virus. The path of the economy continues to, to depend on the course of the virus, remain. and risks to the economic outlook remain. The Delta variant has led to significant increases in COVID-19 cases, resulting in significant hardship and loss, and slowing the economic recovery. Continued progress on vaccinations would help contain the virus and support a return to more normal economic conditions. The Fed's policy actions have been guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people, along with our responsibilities to promote the stability of the financial system. Our asset purchases have been a critical tool. They helped preserve financial stability and market functioning early in the pandemic, and since then have helped foster accommodative financial conditions to support the economy. At our meeting that concluded earlier today, the committee continued to discuss the progress made toward our goals since the committee adopted its asset purchase guidance last December. December. Since then, the economy has made progress toward these goals. If progress continues broadly as expected, <laughs> the committee judges that a moderation in the pace of asset purchases may soon be warranted. 
We also discussed the appropriate pace of tapering asset purchases once economic conditions satisfy the criterion laid out in the committee's guidance. While no decisions were made, participants generally view that, so long as the recovery remains on track, a gradual tapering process that concludes around the middle of next year is likely to be appropriate. Even after our balance sheet stops ex expanding, our elevated holdings of longer-term securities will continue to support accommodative financial conditions. The timing and pace of the coming reduction in asset purchases will not be... Yo, fill my picks. Thank you for the gifted sub. ...regarding the timing of interest rate liftoff, for which we have articulated a different and substantially more stringent test. We continue to expect that it will be appropriate to maintain the current 0 to 1 quarter percent target range for the federal funds rate until labor market conditions have reached levels consistent with the committee's assessment of maximum employment and inflation has risen to 2 percent and is on track to moderately exceed 2 percent for some time. Half of FOMC participants forecast that these favorable economic conditions will be fulfilled by the end of next year. As a result, the median projection for the appropriate level of the federal funds rate lies slightly above the effective lower bound in 2022. Participants generally expect a gradual pace of policy firming that would leave the level of the federal funds rate below estimates of its longer run level through 2024. Of course, these projections do not represent a committee decision or plan, and no one knows with any certainty where the economy will be a year or more from now. The, the fuck is this? The forecast is the fact that policy will remain accommodative until we have achieved our maximum employment and price stability goals. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. Fuck you. We at the Fed will do everything we can to support the economy for as long as it takes to complete the recovery. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Pull the rug! Thank you. We'll go first to Rachel Siegel. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, Chair Powell, for taking our questions. When it comes to the taper and eventually to any- <laughs> Pull the rug, bitch, come on. You can walk us through what substantial further progress looks like given the latest batch of projections that have PCE inflation coming in a little higher than the June projection, the unemployment rate also being higher. The last time we, we watched old Jay Powell on stream, I was doing shots every time he would say the word taper or anything related to it. Progress looks like. That would be great. Sure. So, sure. so the, the test for um, beginning our taper is that we've achieved substantial Fed do go burr. progress toward our goals of inflation and maximum employment. Can you guys hear okay? Inflation, uh, we appear to have achieved more than significant progress. Uh, substantial further progress. So that, that part of the test is, is, uh, is achieved in my view and in the view of, of many others. So the question is really on the maximum employment test. Tape rate equals bond so rips. If you look at a good number of indicators, um, you will see that since last December when we articulated the test and the readings today. <laughs> see you, bitch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See us, bye. You've been fucking up way too long. December of 2020 and uh, typical estimates of the natural rate, 50 or 60 percent of that road has been traveled. So that's, uh, that could be substantial further progress. I, and many on the committee feel that the substantial further progress test uh, for employment has been met. Others feel that, uh, that it's close. They want to see a little more progress. There's, there's a range of perspectives. I guess my own view would be that, that the test, the substantial further progress test for employment is all but met. And so once we've met those two tests, once, once the committee decides that they've met, and that could come as soon as the next meeting, uh, that's the purpose of that language. He said that the last that meeting and the meeting before that. That could come as soon as the next meeting. The committee will consider uh, that test and we'll also look at the broader environment at that time and make a decision uh, whether to favor. Thank you. We'll go to Howard Schneider. Uh, thanks, uh, Chair Powell. Thanks, Michelle. So uh, looking at the SEPs, we are now uh, basically four years of inflation above target and policy never gets to the long run rate. Um, I'm wondering if you could address that from two perspectives. Uh, one, uh, within the new framework uh, that the Fed adopted last year. Uh, and second, from the perspective of uh, the average household that's now uh, being asked to uh, pay higher prices and increasingly higher prices for four years running, uh, when for some this year, uh, real wages have actually gone down. Sure, so 
Um, as you can see, the, the inflation forecasts have moved up a bit in the end ah. years. Uh, and that's really, I think, a reflection of, and they've moved up significantly for this year. And that's, I think, a reflection uh, uh, of the fact that the, the Why is it? and shortages that, that are being, that we're what seeing, the fuck? have really not begun to abate in a meaningful way yet. So those seem to be going to be with us at least for a few more months and perhaps into next year. So that suggests that inflation is going to be higher this year and a number, you know, there were, I guess, the uh, inflation rates for, uh, for next year and 2023 were also marked up, but just by a couple of... He's minutes. literally saying inflation um, rates are going higher. Are very modest overshoots. You're looking at 2.2 and 2.1, you know, uh, two years... And, and there's a years, fucking green candle on the spot. What the fuck? That, that households are going to, uh, you know, uh, notice a couple of tenths of an overshoot. That just happens to be people's forecasts. Um, you know, we want to we want to foster a strong labor market and we want to foster inflation averaging 2 percent over time. And I think we're very much on track to achieve those things. In terms of the framework, I see this is very consistent with the framework. Um, uh, we want inflation expectations to be anchored at around 2 percent. Uh, we want we're, we're um, that that's really the ultimate uh, test of whether we're, we're, we're getting this done under the framework. And um, you know, we, we do want inflation to run moderately above 2%. Um, I, wouldn't put, I wouldn't put too much on a couple of tenths over, over uh, 2% in 2023 and 24, one, one tenth in 24, but uh, you're right, those are the numbers. Thank you. Let's go to Colby Smith. Uh, Chair Powell, uh, thank you, Michelle. Chair Powell, you mentioned ongoing discussions about the tapering timeline. And I'm wondering what the contours of that debate have been. For those that want to move uh, a bit more quickly, is it about maintaining optionality for a 2022 interest rate increase? Um, or is it about financial stability risks or concerns about the efficacy of asset purchases uh, at a time when we have uh, supply constraints? Thank you. So let me say that, uh, that there's very broad support on the committee for this plan, both as to the timing and as to the ta pace of the taper. So this was a unanimous vote today, and I'd say quite quite broad support for, for this approach. Uh, you're correct that, that there, there are some who would prefer to have gone sooner, uh, and they've made their arguments publicly. Some, for some of them, it's a financial stability concern, uh, and for others, it's, uh, it's other, other concerns. They can make their own, uh, make their own arguments. This is, a, this is an approach that the committee will broadly support, and it will, it will put us, uh, having completed our taper, sometime around the middle of next year, which seems appropriate, um, you know, the uh, asset purchases, as I mentioned, were, were very, very important at the, in the early stages of the crisis. They, they, they were essential in restoring market function in the Treasury and other markets. Then as the, as the recovery got going, they supported uh, aggregate demand, as they will do. And now we're in a situation where, where um, they still have a use, but it's time for us to begin to taper them. Their use is m usefulness is much less as a tool than it was at the very beginning. And of course, this leaves the whole question of rate increases ahead, which is really where the the framework, the, the framework is all about how we how we deal with rate increases uh, and that sort of thing. So, so we think this is the appropriate way to go. And again, broad support on the committee. The man literally just said we're going to taper. Thank you. We'll go to Nick Timrose. He just said. We are going to taper. Hi, Tim Rose of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Chair Powell, you have said the test for liftoff is more stringent than the test for tapering. But if the near-term projections today are credible, more of your colleagues seem to think that uh, rate liftoff and not just a taper may be closer at hand. Does the committee have a different opinion than, than you do about the threshold for liftoff that you've articulated or do they believe that either inflation or economic growth will necessitate a rate increase sooner than you do? Inflation is transitory, so, remember? Yes, substantial further progress toward our goals is, is the test for beginning the taper. And the ta taper takes some months in everyone's figuring. So you're going to be well away from, uh, from satisfying the liftoff test. When, when, when we begin the taper. So in terms of the liftoff test, though, uh, you know, it, it is it's what we adopted last September. It's, it's um, labor market conditions consistent with maximum employment. And while we, while we have 
uh, interesting signs that, that in many ways the labor market's very tight. We also have lots of slack in the labor market, and we think that, that those imbalances will sort themselves out. Inflation at 2 percent and on track to, to achieve moderately higher inflation over 2 percent, you know, that really depends on the path of inflation. If inflation remains higher uh, during the course of, of 2000 and 22, then we may already have met that test by the time we reach liftoff. So I just think if you look at if you look at what people are writing down for year end 2022 numbers, some people are writing down very low unemployment rates, and that's only one indicator. But it suggests a very strong labor market, and I think they're writing down in good faith what they see as meeting the test. Uh, there's a range of perspectives about where, where the economy will be, but um, by the way, all but one participants have us lifting off during 2023. So it's not, it's not really an unusually wide uh, array of, of views about this. Thank you. We'll go to Gina Smihalik. Hey, Chair Powell, thank you for taking our questions. Um, Prior to recent media reports, were you aware of the kind of security buying and selling that Presidents Kaplan and Rosengren were participating in last year? And I wonder if you thought those were appropriate. So, no, I was not aware of the specifics of, of what they were doing. Housing market is better than ever. Uh, so let me just Same say a couple things about default this rates subject. Increased in um, we understand very well that the trust of the American people is essential for us to effectively carry out our mission. And that's why I directed uh, the Fed to begin a comprehensive review of the ethics, ethics rules around permissible financial holdings and activity by Fed officials. So those rules are, in, in many respects, the same as those for government agencies, plus uh, a number of things that apply specifically to us because of our business. One of those is sort of three things I would point to in terms of specific uh, restrictions. One is, Ownership of certain assets is not allowed, and that's bank securities and, and other things. Secondly, there are times when we're not allowed to uh, trade at all or to you know, buy and sell financial assets, and that's the period immediately before and during an FOMC meeting. And third, there's regular disclosure. So all of these, everyone's uh, you know, ownership and, and activities are all disclosed on an annual basis. So uh, you know, I, I would have had to go back and read people's financial disclosures to know what their activities have been. This has been our framework for, for a long time. And I, I guess you'd say it's served us well. The other thing you would say, that it is now clearly seen as not adequate to the task of, of, uh, of really uh, sustaining the public's trust in us. We need to make changes, and we're going to do that as a consequence of this. This will be a thoroughgoing and uh, uh, comprehensive review. We're going to gather all the facts. Um, and and look at ways to further tighten our rules and uh, and standards. Great, thank you. We'll go to Steve Leisman. Thank you, uh, thank you. Follow up on Gene's question. Um, the of uh, ownership and, and trades uh, that the Federal Reserve is buying is that one of the modifications? that you're looking at and in that these you, you said yourself they don't clearly not seen as appropriate in that the feds code of conduct says fed officials should avoid even the appearance of the uh of conflict uh, trades in fact and holdings violate the feds code of conduct finally do you have a timeline as to when you might get be done with your review thank you sir don't have a timeline yet we can start so um well let me let me address the muni question since that's that's uh that's in there um, you know, I, I personally owned municipal, municipal securities for many, many years, and in 2019, I, I froze that, meaning I, I, there, there are no, I'm holding all those securities, my wife, my wife and I, to maturity, and uh, munis were always thought to be a pretty safe place for, for a Fed person to invest because, as you, as you know, the lore was that the Fed would never buy municipal securities, so it was not an uncommon <laughs> thing. And so then comes the, the, you know, the COVID crisis, and I reversed that policy. And I did it without hesitating. And the reason was that, that the financial markets, and including the municipal financial market, were very much on the verge of collapse. And it was time to go, and we did. But we also checked with the Office of Government Ethics, and who looked carefully at it and said that I didn't have a conflict. So that's, that's one 
answer that I wanted to share with you. Secondly, you're right, though. As, as a, we're going to be looking at all of those things. I, really, I don't want to get ahead of the, uh, uh, the process here and speculate about particular outcomes. But this, again, comprehensive and, and deliberate process. We're going to make changes. I want to be able to look back on this years from now and, and know that we rose to meet this challenge and handle the situation well. And what we did made a lot of sense. Anybody and, know what video and, I'm talking and, uh, about? Protected the public's interest and the institution that we're all a part of. I'm sorry, uh, Chair Powell. I just want to follow up. <laughs> you said I was right when you said that uh, right about that the Fed should not own the Federal Reserve Fed should not own the same assets they're buying. Is that I think that's a reasonable thing. Yeah, and, and of course, for the most part, we don't. I mean, it, it was a real coincidence. I happened to pre-own these munis. They were they were bought many years ago, actually, Please. and so we started buying munis as part of the municipal liquidity facility. So it was really not a, it just was an unforeseen event and I couldn't sell them. So so what I did was I just held them, checked with the ethics people and, and went ahead. So, but as a general principle, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you, we'll go to Chris Rudaber. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Chair Powell. Um, well, I had a question about uh, jobs and the Fed's schedule, the Fed's um, policy framework that you laid out here, um, you and other Fed officials have often talked about expecting a job market pickup in September uh, as more children return to school, freeing up more parents to work, COVID abating. Uh, you mentioned in the past the extra unemployment benefits expiring. There's some real-time real data suggesting uh, that we may not be seeing much of a return of labor supply. So do you still expect uh, to see that in the next uh, couple of jobs reports? And how would a relatively weak jobs report in September affect your plans? Thank you. So you're right. We, we have a really, I'll call it a unique situation where by many measures, the labor market is tight and widespread reports from employers all over so the economy funny. saying it's quite difficult to hire people, uh, wages moving up and, and that kind of, so quite a tight, um, tight labor market. So our view, I think a widespread view a few months ago was that several things were coming together in the fall, including kids back to school, which would, uh, you know, which would lighten caregiving duties, including the expiration of uh, unemployment. Now, son, daddy needs to teach you something very important about tells. Tells. When you tell them you only use the approved kit, don't look up and away, don't rub your neck, and don't touch your ear. Otherwise, they'll know you're lying to them, right? Whenever you need to lie, and just don't look so up and away, So what happened was Delta neck, happened. Touch your and ear. You, you have this. That affects, right? for example, um, and have our car when school. To qualify. Now, son, daddy needs to teach you something very important about tells. Tells? When you tell them you only use the approved kit, don't look up and away, don't rub your neck, and don't touch your ear. Otherwise, they'll know you're lying to them. That may right? not have happened. Whenever you need to lie, people, just don't people look up and away, rub your neck, you know, or touch your ear. And spending Dad, maybe in, we should um, just take out the thing and put the car in. these face-to-face service industries. You have to learn how to lie <laughs> correctly someday. Might as well be today. I'm trying to get this timing right so I can get a clip of this shit on Reddit. All right, Stan, we're going to need to check in and have our car... Whoever made this meme first, right. fucking salute. Now, son... Daddy needs to teach you something very important about tells. Leisure. It's just that, that inexorably you only people will, these are people who were don't largely working away. back in February of 2020. They'll get back to work ear. when, when it's time to do right? that. It just may take Whenever longer you time. Lie, You're right, though. It didn't happen away, with any, or touch uh, your ear. any force in September, and, and a lot of that was, was Delta. Um, <laughs> In terms of the, uh, the you, you asked also about the test for November. I think if, if the economy uh, continues to uh, progress broadly in line with expectations, then I think, uh, and, and, the, and the ov also the overall situation is appropriate for this, then I think we, we could easily move ahead I I at the, uh, the next meeting. Or not, depending on, on, uh, on whether, we, whether we feel like that those tests are met. Well, just quick, if I just quickly follow up, I mean, what, how much of that will depend on what kind of jobs report we get for September? And I mean, is it, you know, are you in a data dependent phase here where you need to see certain numbers going ahead, or are we at a point where you've accumulated enough progress that? So you, I, it's it is it's accumulated progress. So uh, you know, for me, it wouldn't take a knockout great, super strong employment report. It would take a reasonably good employment report. 
for me to feel like that test is met. And others on the committee, many, many, many on the committee feel that the test is already met. Others want to see more, more progress. And, you know, we'll work it out uh, uh, as, as we go. But I, I would say that in my own thinking, the test is all but met. So I don't, I don't personally need to see a very strong employment report. But I'd like to see a, good, a decent employment report. Um, I mean, it's, it's not, um, it's, again, it's not to be confused with, with the test for liftoff, which is so much higher. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll go to Victoria Guida. Hi, Chair Powell. Um, so I wanted to ask about the Vice Chair of Supervision position, and just I was wondering if you could speak about how you view that role and the extent to which you defer to that person on regulatory policy, and then just sort of a related question. Um, as you know, Randy Quarles' vice chairmanship ends next month, and I was wondering if he's going to retain the supervisory portfolio until he's replaced in that role. Sure. So Dodd-Frank created this position, vice chair for supervision, and it's, it's, there's actually a specific assignment in the Dodd-Frank Frank language, as I'm sure you know. And effectively, what it means is that the vice chair for supervision is charged with, with setting the regulatory agenda. And you know it's a it's a specific grant of authority. And uh, in the ten years almost that I've been at the Fed, that person has really done that. Uh, Dan Tarullo certainly did it, and and uh, Vice Chair Quarles did it as well. And I, I would, you know, I, I I think I respect that authority. I respect that. That's the person who will set the regulatory um, agenda going forward. And I, I would accept that. And and furthermore, I, you know, it's fully appropriate. To, to look at, for, for a new person to come in and, and look at the current state of regulation and supervision and, and uh, suggest appropriate changes, and, and I welcome that. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, Vice Chair Quarles' term, we're- the South Park episode where Terrence and Philip expose a giant rift in the function of the global economy and exploit it, we'll and then all of South Park reverse engineers, their all goes and exploits them. Thank you. We'll go to Steve Matthews. My goal is to become a character on South Park, to have some, some character of some sort be Thank spawned. You, uh, Chair Powell, with this I shit show about the in mind, monetary policy framework. In particular, uh, Bloomberg surveyed economists, and we found that they predict liftoff will happen when the U.S. unemployment rate is 3.8 percent, but the black unemployment Power hour, rate bitch, come on. is 6.1 percent. And I'm wondering if if a 6.1 percent unemployment rate for African Americans. Yeah, someone tell me why this man has a fucking garage sale plastic foldable table in what appears to be a conference room of Citadel Securities. Hedgies are fuck. Is consistent with full employment or whether it would need to be lower as part of your inclusive growth strategy. Right, so the, the worse than my the desk. The broad and inclusive goal was not to target a particular uh, unemployment rate for any particular group. Really, we look at a broad range of, of, of uh, a very broad range of um, metrics when we think about what maximum employment is. And one of the things we look at is your background's even better. Rates and participation <laughs> rates and wages for different demographic and age groups and that kind of thing. So we will do all of that. So I, I think if you if you look back, what were we really what were we really thinking? So we, we all saw the That's a trick question. You fucking weren't. You, you weren't thinking years of before the pandemic hit. You saw after a lot of long progress, you saw a really strong labor market and you saw wages at the low end moving up faster than everywhere else. Something that That's inflation. We also saw uh, the lowest um, unemployment rates for minority and minorities of various uh, you know for African Americans for example. Uh, and and also participation rates, but we saw we saw really really healthy set of dynamics. And by the way, we also there was no AMC reason why it could like continue. It's going to rip there were no imbalances in the economy, and, and, and then along came the pandemic. pandemic. Much love, brother. Appreciate you, Matt. Thank you, man. Fucking ready. She's been ready for so fucking long. Oh my god. I don't know, it's like to feel bad for the guy or to hate him even more. He reminds me of the, I can't remember the actor's name, but whoever played fucking, I don't think it was called Bad Santa, but it was the movie with the Herman Merman kid. 
Whoever played Santa, I feel I have that, like, anti-hero fucking, what do you call it? Approach. To Mr. Powell. Oh, bitch, what are you doing? Okay. Bad Santa too, thank you. I need to see GME move before I get too hippity hype. <laughs> Blast tunes and yell at this shit, that's why we haven't ripped. I have no idea where these fucking goddamn flies are coming from. Come back, bitch. Come on, back. Come on! Okay, Amy's moving. A lot of volume. Welcome to the church, motherfuckers! He reminds me of my great-great-grandfather I never met. Fruit flies from your cans. Yeah, you're right. They don't want it over 40. Is it me or is the fucking goddamn price stuck at 42? Okay. Is it me or is the fucking price stuck at 4005? Fuck! AMC is about to explode. I can feel it in my soul. The government doesn't want me getting the discount tax. I would go crazy. <laughs> Much love, bro. Steam's rock. Folded hands. Wait, sir. Oh my god. Oh, fucking stupid, man. Done the same fucking shit all day. You come down this much? You go back to open? You go up the same amount you went down earlier? Come back down to where you open? Drop a little bit? Alright, go back to where you open? Go up a little bit? Alright, go back to where you open? Uh, go up a little bit, and then come down about halfway. That's neat. What about it? What about Amy? Well, it appears as though the same shit's going on just over this fucking course of two days. Fuck! So fucking stupid, man. Just fucking riff already. Astro, did anyone create any memes yet for your meme challenge? Uh, I think a few people have. But I'm open to any and all. Anything you got, send it my fucking way. Send it my fucking way. I'm gonna put them into videos. I'm gonna be tweeting them. Uh, I'll make uh, uh, alert sounds or alerts out of them. Yeah, yeah, send them my way.
I need to see GME move. I need to see GME move. They just slammed it with a bunch of 200, uh... My basic TA if we break $41.50, do we gap fill $44? E maybe? Uh, you, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you could, you could see it that way. You could see it that way. Come on, bitch. Ooh, bitch, what are you doing? Look how jagged it moves, man. Like, when you have a stock that has that much of a fucking spread that... The interval at which trades are happening are like fucking look like Matt Core's dancing, like no rhythm, no soul, right? Then you got Jimbo over here, who I guess is catatonic. He hasn't moved in ages. Talking ball though. Uh, yeah, when you when you have like this jagged movement, that, that's literally just a uh. Oh, what do you call it? That's a sign of either... In general, it's, it's lack of liquidity. It can be on the supply side or the demand side. Either way, though... So fucked.
This is the one second chart right here, by the way. I'm sorry, this is a five second chart. This is GME right here. And then this is AMC. Fucking unreal. How much, bitch? How much you donate? What if the chart is showing us the future? Check one minute yep. today compared to four hours August 10th to today. WDF. Um, yeah. yeah. You're right on the money. It's just about knowing what part of the future it's referencing. That's the only thing that has dumped myself and the rest of the rest of uh, all the talent that has jumped in on this. The only thing that has confused us. And that's that's been the problem we've been trying to address. Fuck. Go 
Find out you stream on Twitch. Can do hate respects. Yo, thank you, man. Three months in one day. My fuzzy little man, Peach. It's some fucking crazy shit, man.